let's begin to answer the objection we raised in the last episode. Does Acts 6.6 establish that no one other than the apostles had prophetic ability prior to Acts 6.6? You see, at the heart of this objection is the belief that this passage means that the apostles would grant prophetic powers to these seven men to fulfill the role of attending to the widows. As a part of their initiation as servants of the church, the seven men would become the first people beyond the apostles with prophetic abilities. However, that argument is only sound if it can be established that there was only one reason the apostles would lay hands on the seven. The truth of the matter is, the laying on of hands was a well-established practice among the ancients. Its presence is found several times in the Bible. Further, it had an established significance completely unrelated to the giving of the Holy Spirit. Timothy provides an interesting case. He was an inspired teacher of the early church. The Bible states that he received that prophetic ability through the laying on of the apostle Paul's hands. Paul said, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. 2 Timothy 1, uh, verses 6 and 7. Yet there is another statement of Timothy's having had hands laid on him. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid hands on you, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14. The verse, these verses rather describe both the manner through the laying on of Paul's hands and the time when the council of elders laid their hands on you, of Timothy's receiving the prophetic empowerment of the Holy Spirit. While the specific details of the ceremony are not mentioned, they are not described, we do know that two groups of people laid their hands on Timothy. We know that Paul did so to empower him with the gift of God. That's what apostles did. The purpose of the elders' touch on Timothy was a purpose beyond that of granting the Spirit's power to Timothy. It was likely a sign of commission or endorsement of his work. Using the laying on of hands as an endorsement or an initiation is recorded as an existing ancient practice in Genesis 48, 14, and 17, Numbers 27, 23, Mark 10, 16, Acts 13, 3, and again in 1 Timothy 5, 22. Having those in authority lay hands on a servant that they were commissioning was an expected occurrence in the biblical era. So then, for what purpose did the apostles lay hands on the men of Acts 6? Well, just read their own words. They specify the purpose of their actions. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. That's Acts 6.3. So the question then, when did the apostles point, appoint them to the duty, and what was the indication they had done so? Well, the answer is clear. Verse 6 is the time and the manner in which the apostles appointed these seven men to the duty. Now, just notice for a moment. There is no mention of the Holy Spirit or prophetic empowerment of the laying on of hands with the seven men. That's important, and we will cover that more in more detail in the very next episode.